last episode, we explored the Windy City, admired its remarkable architecture, and savored Portillo's famous hot dogs. We then finished the day by visiting one of the city's best rooftop bars and enjoying some late night deep dish pizza at Lu Malnati's renowned pizzeria. On this episode, we will compare Uno and Lu Malnati's pizzeria, sample more delicious Chicago classics, and continue to revel in the city's inspiring surroundings. <laughs> Another morning here in Chicago and of course we're gonna go look at some of the beautiful architecture, learn more about it and eat some more food. So our first stop for breakfast is donuts. Like a pop and play. It's had the best reviews nearby online and it looks really good. People yeah. seem to like wow, it. Wow, I can't believe the line. So we have come to apparently one of the best places to have a donut and something else we ordered in Chicago. It is called the Dough Right Donuts and everything looks really good. It's such like a happy little atmosphere too, but I mean it's donuts, how can you not be? I want to try the maple first. It's two pieces of bacon on top. There's nothing better to me than the combination of maple and bacon. It looks really good. It was the last one left so it must be popular. Is there everything you hope for? That saltiness with the maple and the sweetness and the actual donut is really good. The only thing I think would make it better is if it was fresh. Mmm, it's, it's, it's not. not. It's cold, I mean. Oh, I see what you're saying. And I got the cream cheese Danish, oh, yeah. which looks. Oh, and it actually smells like maple as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, the bite needs to be big enough to get into the cream <laughs> cheese. Let's see if I can do it. Show us Marky. Very nice, very unhealthy tasting. Mm -hmm. Exactly how you want a donut to be. Now this place is not just known for the donuts, it's known for the crispy chicken sandwich. So we have that one coming in a few minutes. Olivia. Oh, thank you. I think they put it on a bagel. Let's see what? I think it said like a bun. Oh, and they were so nice. They asked us if we we're sharing. They knew somehow. Mm. Oh, it looks like a potato bun. Oh yeah, this is gonna be really good. And I love how they put mayo in the sandwiches here. I don't know if you noticed the portillos they had. Yeah. So good. Okay. That's why you love mayo in all your sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can try it together. Mm. It's really good. Chicago, you know how to feed people. Mm -hmm. And they make the meat fresh too, it's not reheated. Because mm -hmm. usually when they reheat meat, I can really taste it and I can't do it. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfectly cooked. Very crispy. Now that we're all fueled up, we are going to go to the building that we saw from the rooftop last night. Mm -hmm because on its walls, it has some special artifacts. In a way, yeah. All right, so you'll know in just a moment what we mean. It's really cool. Oh, there's tons. So it turns out it's on the Tribune Tower, Thanks. not the Wrigley Tower that we thought. All right, oh wow, even a stone from Petra. What I want to know is how do they get these? Because usually that's like a, you know? It's ancient gate from Buon, Korea. The beach where D-Day happened. It becomes more unbelievable when you actually get into the really ancient stuff because supposedly there's the Colosseum, the Parthenon, piece of wall from the Great Wall of China. Aztec ruins. I'm very impressed that they are actually all real.
when the Chicago Southern Line first started being built, Lake Michigan was all the way out here, almost like by Michigan Avenue. And then it just kind of moved out. Yeah, I'm not really sure how, but the other interesting thing was we're, we're about to walk over the river. Olivia is dreading that because it's always so cold over there from the crosswinds. The river barely had any depth. For years they've been digging and it is what it is today. And until the late 1990s, the river was disgusting. It still is not like the cleanest, but they've like huge, huge difference because it actually used to smell for decades. They've always had a really, really big problem. But now you come to the river today and it's one of the most beautiful parts of the city. We highly, highly recommend the architecture tour on the river. Unfortunately, because it's winter, there aren't that many, so we didn't get to do one. I think this spot is one of my favorite spots in the city. Would you consider this the center of the city? Where would you consider the center? I always like that question. Okay, so you refer to Chicago downtown area, but yeah. then you have the Loop, you have different neighborhoods. So I'd say the Loop is probably the center center in Chicago and South there, maybe. Uh, what about like wrong? center point? I don't, I mean, this feels like a pretty central point because this is where like the river comes out to Lake Michigan. Yeah. And I mean, it has some of the most impressive, stunning buildings. Look, look at this. We've made it to the river walk and we're kind of at the very beginning. It goes for about 1.25 miles all around and this spot is a must to come hang out in the summertime. So these bridges right here behind us were invented in Chicago. The city of Chicago went through a lot of different bridges before they actually settled on these. So they basically open up like that. And nowadays it's only for like recreational sail ships that pass by that they have to open. But the decades in the past, when Chicago was a very industrial city and the river was a major, major transportation hub. For St. Patrick's Day, Chicago is really, really well known because they dye the whole river green. So this house behind me was built in 1886 and it's one of the only remaining buildings here in the center of the city. It still has the original architecture. So back in the day, this was considered an original elite residential home here in Michigan Avenue, close to Michigan Avenue. Today is really cold and it's about to get a lot colder, so I'm glad we're leaving tomorrow. And uh, now I remember why I left Chicago, why I don't want to live here anymore. <laughs> and I also don't mind the cold, but it's like when it's like this and there's no snow or anything, it's like not. We're going to have a classic beef sandwich and we came to no other than Mr. Beef. This is a really, really well-known place. The TV show The Bear that takes place here in Chicago is actually inspired by this place and the set is rebuilt to look exactly how the inside of this looks. So we've come here to see what this is about and see if it actually lives up to the hype and we're gonna try the, the bear. So who named it first, the store or? Since we started doing our research for food here in Chicago, I've been really excited to try the Italian beef sandwich. So we've come here at Mr. Beef to see what it's all about. Very juicy. Very juicy. Basically the final step to the sandwich, you dip it in the juices of the meat. We got the bear, so that has like sweet and spicy peppers and a lot of meat. The meat's been slow cooked for a long time. It's just wrapped so many times. I 
I can see why someone would really like it. I am pretty picky with meat, and although it tastes like really good meat, just like those, it's like the whole flavor is the meat. If you're picky with meat, I'll maybe try something different instead. I'm even more picky with meat than you, so I could have gone without eating it. I lived here for so many years, and I never had it. I feel like we had to. But when you're visiting, you just gotta do some stuff. The flavor is nice. Yeah. The meat is not gamey. It's just very meaty. For someone that doesn't like fat, like I think the juice is that it's dipped mm -hmm. in. It has, it's like mostly fat. So the bun is drenched with meat, fat, and juices, which I think that's, but I'm actually really surprised. The meat is. No, the meat's nice. It's, yeah. it's just very. With some French fries, this could be really yeah. good. I see what the rave is about. I would ruin it and put ketchup on it. To be completely fair, I liked it more than I thought I would. I uh, liked it less than I thought I would. Uh, we only had one sandwich between the two of us because we're saving room for some more dip dish pizza. We're gonna go to the place that claims to be the original dip dish pizza, and we'll see which one Olivia likes more. I know I like Viteria Uno more. Last night we'll try Illuminatis. Today we've come to the birthplace of deep dish pizza where Ike Sewell supposedly he invented the deep dish pizza in 1943 and this was the first place to do it. Now there's a lot of dispute like we were saying last night because Rudy Milnatis worked here and he was the one that invented as a cook the deep dish pizza here. So today we're going to go and try Uno's and see which one is better. We're gonna start with some appetizers. This is a garlic baguette with this creamy crab and shrimp dip with diced tomatoes and garlic. So I know I look ridiculous right now, but <laughs> things are tight here. Let's see. <laughs> Surprised you, huh? Oh no. It's really good. I just wasn't expecting it to be thrown in my mouth. <laughs> it's kind of like lobster bisque. Yeah, but with like extra cheese and cream. Mm -hmm. A little too much oregano for me though. I like it. The oregano overtakes the flavor. Oh, yeah, and I wasn't expecting the bread to be that crunchy. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of it was, was like a, a startle to me. Yeah, it's a very American Italian flavor. Yeah. We've been waiting for about 40 minutes for the pizza. It should be coming soon. And now I'm excited to try the first ever deep dish pizza. The moment of truth has come. It smells really it, good. It smells better than Luminati's, too. Yeah, and it's a lot more of like a hefty. Yeah, this is what I'm used to when I'm like Chicago yeah. dip dish. Pizza. And the crust is a lot thicker. All right, cut into it. Let's see. The only thing that I think the Luminati's would be a little better at the might sauce. be the, um, the sauce. We'll see. I don't want to burn myself. Really hot. <laughs> <laughs> the flavor itself is actually quite similar. Like the sauce, the sausage, the cheese, the crust is just very different. This actually reminds me more of like an actual like pie crust. Yeah. More like crumbly, but it's not mm -hmm. too heavy or anything. But I like it. I like yeah. the The flavors are very, very similar, but the crust in this one is better. So, Luminati's or Uno? Can I say both for different reasons? You gotta choose one. If you were to choose one. <laughs> for the experience, I would say this. Me too. All right, <laughs> let's eat. 